Shanti Shanti Om Sāpakāya ca dharmasya Sarva dharma svarupine Sāpakāya ca dharmasya Sarva dharma svarupine Avatāra varishthāya Rāma-Krishnā yate nama Asatoma sadgamaya Tamasoma jodagamaya Pratyorama mṛtangamaya Om Shanti 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 Let us offer our salutations to Sri Ramakrishna, the establisher of religion universal, the embodiment of all religions, the supreme God incarnate. Let us pray to him to lead us from the unreal to the real, to lead us from the darkness of ignorance, to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. For today's class, I have chosen the subject from the Gospel, dangers of doubt. Doubting is always having negative result. It has got various shades, suspicion, disbelief. You know, when Duryodhan went to Dwarka to meet Sri Krishna and when he went there he did meet Lord Krishna then Krishna asked him what do you want straight away Sri Krishna asked him and Duryodhan at the moment thought what is the use of having Sri Krishna rather than his army because in the battle army is required so he did not understand properly the glory of Sri Krishna so he began to doubt about the Mahima of Sri Krishna. He thought army is preferable to Sri Krishna and the result was ruination. Anyway, Sri Ramakrishna says in the Gospel, one should practice discrimination and pray to God, O oh Lord, give me faith and devotion. Once a person has faith, he has achieved everything. There is nothing greater than faith. It is said in the Puran, that Sri Rama, who was God himself, the embodiment of absolute Brahman, he had to build a bridge to cross the sea to Ceylon. But Hanuman, trusting in Sri Rama's name, cleared the sea in one jump and reached the other side. He had no need of a bridge. That's the tremendous power of faith. Sri Ramakrishna also gives an example. Once a person was about to cross the sea, Vibhishan, came to his rescue and said, Don't worry, I will make you cross this ocean, just follow what I say. Then he wrote Rama's name on a leaf, which that person did not know. And he tied it in a corner of the man's wearing cloth. And then Vibhishan said to him, Look, now don't be afraid, be courageous, have faith, and walk on the water. You will be able to cross the sea without any difficulty. But look here, Vibhishan gave a warning. The moment you lose faith, you will be drowned. And the man, in the beginning he believed what Vibhishan said. So he just was walking very easily on the water, as if he is walking with the occult power. Just he didn't feel any problem, he just was walking. So when he has reached almost the middle of the sea, suddenly some kind of doubt came in the corner of his mind. It provoked him to see what did Vibhishan tied in his cloth. What did he do? Just a curiosity. He should not have touched it. Simply, what Vibhishan said, simply could have, keep on walking, would have gone. But the disbelief came. So, he opened it and found only a leaf with the name of Rama written on it. What is this? He thought. Just the name of Rama? That's all. 
as soon as the doubt entered his mind that person sank under the water this story has been told by shri ramakrishna how doubt is dangerous see we are not following all these values you know so we are we are really very careless in our life and we suffer also even though suffering we don't learn there is a tragic part anyway there is no way unless we learn the technique of living we are bound to suffer even if you are in heaven you will suffer you must really know the technique of living the life properly it must be oriented properly with spiritual values that's why shri ramakrishna has given specific instructions about all these values how one should develop faith love and devotion to god how one should yearn for god yearning so renunciation does not mean simply dispassion shri ramakrishna himself defines renunciation means dispassion and longing that's the definition of shri ramakrishna if a man has faith in god even if a person has committed the most heinous sins such as killing a cow or a woman he will certainly be saved through his faith let him only say to god o oh lord i will not repeat such an action and he need not be afraid of anything that he must be very certain he will never repeat again if that is done then god's help is always there again shri ramakrishna says unless a person is guileless he cannot so easily have faith in god god is far far away from the mind steeped in worldliness worldly intelligence creates many doubts and many forms of pride pride of learning pride of wealth and the rest so doubt is a retarding force it saps the energy of a person it doesn't allow the person to be happy it is like a slow poison it is like a slow poison slow it kills him every moment the doubt and finally that person will be ruined so on brahman ji says all these spiritual stalwarts that's why keep on telling our people those who really sincerely aspiring for spiritual life please read spiritual texts every day it's a must you must read every day then only you will understand something about spirituality otherwise the force of worldliness drags you like crocodile dragging the animal into the water so brahman ji says if a person has faith in the words of his guru and follows them all his doubts and troubles vanish do not doubt that god exists don't doubt the existence of god faith is the one thing needed intense faith let not doubts get hold of your mind generally we see people are under the grip of the mind oh my mind is not good today my mind is sick so mind is predominating actor in the life of a person so the soul is uh, behaving like a toy in the hands of mind so the soul is simply a master for the name sake in reality mind has become the master and he mind dictates the soul go this way go that way it dances to the tune of the mind that is whenever a person dances to the tune of the mind it is certain that he is utterly under the grip of the worldliness the worldliness is because of the grip of the mind over the soul faith is the one thing needed intense faith let not doubts get hold of your mind doubts will come they do come until you have realized god therefore you must hold to god and pray think to yourself god is but because of the impurities of my mind i cannot see him when my mind heart when my heart and mind have become purified then through the, his grace i shall surely see him this resignation should be inspired by the right spirit and faith no doubt must enter your heart it is no use taking the name of god to cross the river and at the same time raising your cloth to keep it dry brahman ji says that he who has faith in god is freed from doubts he who has no faith in god he doubts everything he who has faith in god overcomes all needless to say 
association with the holy is also very important that's why we conduct retreat throughout summer of 2004 we have fixed this formish what a tremendous uh, education it is tremendous education i really tell you never miss even a single retreat you can miss anything but don't miss retreats not that just you attend one retreat there are four retreats i'll attend only one no that kind of satisfaction should not come you must be you must be hankering after spiritual knowledge i want more i want more that is you must keep going forward in thinking spirituality you must improve your spiritual life that's the purpose of conducting retreats retreats also provide holy association so it's very important for in their company doubts are removed and pure thoughts are awakened swami shivananda ji he said the truth is that if one has sincerity one is seldom beset by doubts or even if a doubt arises god himself gets it solved from within it is true that all doubts cannot be dispelled till one is face to face with god himself never have any doubt about his grace never allow even such a thought to cross your mind swami shivanand says god's grace is real is samadhi such an easy thing when that most excellent and unequaled parabrahman the supreme reality is seen as self atman all the bondages of the heart of the seer such as inherited ignorance etc are rent asunder all doubts get resolved and the store of accumulated karma other than that of parabdha wears out swami turiyanji says don't doubt do the work started by swami vivekananda in, in the right spirit from that itself will come samadhi or any other supreme spiritual attainment have no doubt plunge headlong into swami ji's work atmano mokshartam jagadhitaya sacrifice yourself tan man dhan all the three must be done not simply tan tan and man only two all the three must be done when the mind becomes impure doubts immediately make their appearance so the very fact the person doubts means his mind is not purified enough don't have any doubts know that what you are doing is a lord's work give your whole heart and soul to it swami adbhutananda ji he says he who fears and doubts cannot make any progress either in this spiritual or worldly sphere the mind is cramped he alone is a hero he alone attains greatness who moves forward to realize the truth without caring whether the world is real or not if a man doubts the existence of god there is no hope of his getting liberation the nature of the mind can be changed by chanting the name of the lord gradually desires and doubts cease and the mind dissolves into its causality then there is none to think or imagine doubt arises in the mind of an aspirant if he does not practice spiritual disciplines and doubt is the root of all troubles swami ramakrishna anand ji he said about the doubt it is the greatest relief when we get rid of egotism it is as if a heavy burden rolled off at once all our doubts and fears and anxieties and troubles disappear remaining in the mind you will never get away from doubt for how long do you think as long as there is doubt in your mind when you have reached a different conclusion about a thing you cease to think about it so thinking and doubting are synonymous if you make much of mind you make much of doubt people are skeptics why because they make much of this little mind but the mind never directs a man properly go beyond the mind and you will go beyond all doubt inside the body there is desire and greed inside the mind there is doubt inside the world there is change there is death go beyond these and you will find peace and bliss until you go beyond them you can never realize what peace and bliss mean beyond the darkness of doubt shines the region of eternal light and infinite bliss 
somebody asked a question to Swami Ramakrishnanath Ji. Master, can you tell me why this disbelief assails us? Swami Ji says, this disbelief is almost an insurmountable obstacle in the spiritual life. It is not only an obstacle but a disease. Doubt is a disease. Swami Shardhan Ji says, never allow any doubts to cross your mind. The moment a doubt arises, immediately think of the Lord and be convinced that whatever takes place by His will is always for your good. Whatever is happening is happening at His command. And if He wills, the situation will change. With this attitude, resign yourself to the Lord and be happy and free from cares. Instead of doubting yourself, feel that you are the possessor of infinite strength and have the might to overcome all difficulties. It is a strong, the heroic who do noble deeds and become great. Those who are weak and vacillating are lost like broken clouds in the sky. Frankly, Sadhana also says, doubt is a sign of disease. It is not the mind's normal condition. If you are in doubt, pray to God in this way, O God, if you really exist, do such and such a thing for me that I may believe in you. Even such a prayer is helpful. Swami Vigyananji also has said, take care that doubts of any sort do not assail you. And Swami Vigyananji says, to doubt is to sin. To doubt is to sin. So, so much has been said about the destructive power of doubt. All of them have warned severely, strictly, that we should not entertain doubt, we should properly handle it, handling the doubt in a proper way. There is a technique for everything. Doubts may come, but if you know how to handle the doubts, then you will be not in danger. To count the varieties of doubts that arise in one's mind is to count all the thoughts of the mind. Most of our thoughts are plagued with doubts. Some are just, some unjust. It is the unjust kind of doubts that are the cause of misery in our life. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, Agnyascha Shraddhanascha Samshayatma Vinashyati Nayam Lokosti Naparo Nasukam Samshayatmana Lord Krishna also says very clearly, the man who is ignorant and without faith and always doubting ruins himself. A doubting soul has neither this world nor the next nor happiness. So, doubt is really a demon. So many demons are staying in our heart and we are boasting. Kill the demons. Use your boasting that way. How you tackle your, the demons residing in your heart. Otherwise your boasting will be like uh, uh, in Mahabharata it comes. What is his name? Who boasted was boasting. In Virat, in Virat Parva it comes. Huh? No, no, no. There's some name. Uttara. Uttara Paurush. <laughs> Uttara was the son of King Virat. He was boasting so tremendously. And Arjuna was hearing all these things. Arjuna was the Sarathi, Brahmana. When you took him to the near the war front, he began to shiver. All his boasting vanished. <laughs> anyway, Samshaya, that's the Sanskrit word for doubt. Samshaya. It means a doubt about the nature of a thing in general and about the existence of a thing in particular. Suppose in the dusk, I see a thing at a distance. Immediately doubt may come whether that is a stump of a tree or a man. This doubt is not harmful because it goads me to take up further inquiry into the nature of the thing. The scriptures say that doubt, samshaya, also called as asambhavana, that is improbability, is of two kinds. Samshaya is of two kinds. One is about the authority of knowledge to stand as testimony and the other about the object of knowledge. Testimony means pramana, object of knowledge means prameya, pramana, prameya. The doubt relating to pramana, testimony, may be in the form of which path of disciplines should one follow to reach the goal, whether the Vedantic texts stand as a testimony to Brahman 
or they prove something else etc on the other hand the doubt relating to the object of knowledge that is prameya may be in the forms of uh, whether buddhi is atman or something else is which one is true of these two propositions jiva and brahman are one and jiva and brahman are eternally separate whether there is a brahman which can be known by the senses there is another kind of doubt it is called vichikitsa nachiketas in the kathopanishad expresses in the in that upanishad this is a different kind of doubt vichikitsa he says that people doubt the very existence of the thing some say that the atman after the death of the body abides some say it does not from the story it does not seem likely that nachiketas had this doubt himself nachiket alludes to a doubt that remains a riddle for the ordinary sense bound people who doubt the very existence of atman after the death of the body this doubt can be con- included in the prameya type of doubts prameya type of doubts regards regarding the object of knowledge because it speaks of indecisiveness about the object the idea can be understood by an example suppose i want to go to a doctor i may have a doubt whether or not this road leads to the doctor's chamber pramanagata samshaya i may also have doubts whether the doctor is competent to cure my disease or even whether there is a doctor as such that is meya gata samshaya one is pramana gata samshaya the other one is prameya gata samshaya the last type since it doubts the very existence of the doctor in question is a very serious doubt because in the case of our question about knowing our own being it leads to doubting our own existence which is a ridiculous doubt we lose ourselves the doubters themselves the taitri upanishad alludes to the outcome of such a doubt asat brahmayati ved chet asat brahmeti veda chet if anybody knows brahman to be non existent asanneva sa bhavati that person becomes nobody facing the reality of life as such we feel desperate and concerned about the unresolved question of what will happen to us at the end hopelessness looms large the just anxiety suffocates our life so much that we fail to concentrate on the immediate nachiketas alludes to this remarkable obsession in human mind which he calls vichikitsa or doubt at times we encounter situations which present bewildering pictures to us we do not know how to meet the challenges then alternatives keep on presenting before our mind all this opportune moment at this opportune moment our own doubts come to the surface with the obsession of what if uncertainty follows and we fall into the old ruts of compulsive rituals and steadily developed behavioral patterns failing to face it independently and with our inner grit sometimes i may feel that my friend is not speaking the whole truth that means a friend is dishonest even if he knows certain facts he is not telling me this is a doubt based upon the spoken words of the friend or i may feel that my friend bears hatred towards me i doubt him his sincerity of purpose at every joint venture this doubt is based on my imagination these are cases of doubting the integrity of my friend these are not based upon facts if it were so there would have been no doubt about it but by conjecturing a lie in my friend's words or insincerity in his behavior is a doubt which is unjust in respect of our relationship it breeds misunderstanding and finally leads to ending of friendship and mutual ties well i may have every right to have such doubts at my own cost but when i take undue liberty to express these doubts to the friend with the help of uh, sweetened hints i prove myself to be i prove myself to be immature what is maturity maturity is a balance between the courage about my feelings and consideration for others feelings so i become undependable in the eye of the friend further this cruel act hurts the friend so much that no amount of my compensatory friendly gestures or acts would patch up the wound in the life of a spiritual aspirant it is an obstacle god forbid it might describe our futile labor in outgrowing the limits of mind and growing spiritually shri ramkrishna compares this phenomenon 
with the fate of those who labor hard to row a boat when it is anchored or of the reservoir with rat holes through which all water that one tries to store is drained out doubts are pathological many of us live with this doubting disease without being aware of it some doubts are a neurological or mental disease termed obsessive compulsive disorder <laughs> medical term obsessive compulsive disorder ocd apart from our own disposition the environment in which we are raised is also a great contributor to the formation of this disorder it is called a disorder because a doubt hardly sees the positive side of anything or any person to arrive at a conclusion finally a doubting mind depends heavily upon the negative aspect of it unfortunately if such a disease is nurtured without being aware of its ill effects it makes a person cynical they say conventional psychotherapy is notoriously ineffective with such a disease what if is one of the questions asked by the doubting mind in respect of both pramana and prameya that mind is a weak mind which does not dare to take even a little amount of risk risk free responsibility is a farce what if is not in fact a harmful doubt rather it helps us to take preventive steps but if it becomes an impediment to enterprise then it is not only a doubt but also a fear born out of doubts so those who go on nurturing their doubts are non starters they live a, they live a miserable life with the obsession of the question what if if only we could know for sure that the imaginary suggestions should not be tolerated for long but a fundamental disorder in us will not help us to know it for certain on the other hand the disorder cannot tolerate uncertainty then it compels us to take recourse to the formation of some behavioral patterns as for example people going on washing hands again and again to get rid of the doubts regarding contamination they check the padlock four times after it has been securely locked and finally leave it unlocked in this way a satisfactory ritualistic practice is formed things become complicated and complex slowly until they take another shape to stop all doubts we start believing in contrary things doubtlessly in the scriptures there is an expression viparita bhavana or contrary knowledge that is born of these doubts untruth becomes truth that's called viparit bhavana and reality becomes reality and uncertainty becomes certainty the result is as the scriptures say asad eva idam agra asid it was non existence alone that existed before does it take long before one to discover the fallacy in the expression non existence existed similarly in the context of our behavior in the world it is our bitter experience that people doubt the truth in others words the sincerity in others behavior and based on these speculative doubts they conclude that the other person has no integrity the mind surrenders to the sway of viparit bhavana lord krishna says that for these people there is no happiness in this world or in the other so we should eliminate this chronic disease of doubt first the question of what if arises only when we doubt the efficacy of the means this problem can be solved by generating by generating a sense of certainty in our mind certainty is born out of shravan technically the definition of shravan is the discovery of the true significance of the identity of the individual self and the supreme self with the aid of the great sayings like tattvamasi the message imparted through this definition is that one should gather proper information about one's goal and take opinion from the experts in the field in this way all our doubts about the undertaking can be resolved to a great extent and our ambivalence or uncertainty about it is eliminated this exercise will give rise to pramana gata shraddha which will mean in this context faith in the words of the guru and the scriptures undecided about planning crucial moves 
people go to the experts for counseling similarly in spiritual life the aspirants depend on the counseling of the guru and the scriptures narendra nath swami vekananda he went to shiramakshna to get the answer to his burning question sir have you seen god shiramakshna's instantaneous answer blew out a questioning disbelief from narendra's mind shiramakshna immediately said yes i have seen god i see him as i see you here only more clearly the second point is that a doubting mind is not always a deformed mind there are some just doubts also doubt is the beginning and the end of our efforts to know one scholar has said such a doubt is a questioning doubt of a formative mind which leads to the transformation of it shri ramakrishna asked the divine mother oh mother if you are real that means he is doubting if you are real then why don't you reveal yourself to me this child like demand is a sample of the earnestness of a questioning mind writ large the scriptures advise us to practice innocent shraddha faith of a child <clears throat> oh my dear have faith shraddha sava here shraddha has been understood as conviction about the existence of something prameya gata shraddha this shraddha is generated by manan which means to arrive at the validity of the truth about our goal through logical reasoning it is like being sure about the benefits that the goal offers by generating intellectual conviction about the goal through reasoning by this process we can get rid of the doubts about the prameya thirdly and interestingly also to liberate us from the torments of the doubts of uncertainty like washing hands a fixed number of times etc the scriptures are ready with the do's and don'ts in the form of rules rituals and traditions though it is true that all of us want freedom to take our decision such people find a sense of certainty in compulsive rules and rituals particularly taking into account the myriad types of moral dilemma that we face in life the puranas present innumerable critical and dramatic situations and their solutions and thereafter an analysis on why a moral dilemma has been solved in that way the question remains will the scriptures help us to face all peculiar situations certainly not but as the scriptures as the scriptural injunctions and rituals are based on the positive aspects of crit- critical situations if we had followed them so far they would have helped us develop a positive frame of mind to judge our problems fourthly the vipritha bhavana is done away with by nididhyasana the definition of nididhyasana is when the shravan and manan the mind develops a firm and undoubted conviction and dwells constantly on the self alone it is called unbroken meditation nididhyasana helps us to register a big paradigm shift it confirms our own reality and along with it the inherent power of our goodness swami ji discussed this point in the second chapter of raj yoga under the subhead the first steps he says that once one commences following the course to the goal one will start experiencing the result bit by bit then it will inspire him to go forward with interest and one pointed determination the doubt in the form of disbelieving others integrity is the result of viprit bhavana and can be overcome by the practice of belief in the strength of our own goodness holy mother shri sharada devi faced a horrible situation when she encountered the decoyed couple in a vast lonely field in the night she did not have any doubt that she was pure hence she did not doubt the innate goodness of humans whether they are fallen as decoyed like amzad or risen as saints like swami sharada The holy mother held the decoyed lady by the hand and asked her for help. We know how the decoyed couple helped the mother to reach her companions safely. They became immortally related to the mother ever since. This is a great lesson for the parents and teachers in all fields. Once we highlight the goodness in the students, they are bound to be cast in a good mold. In olden days the gurus used to highlight the positive aspects of anything about the disciples. and their work and thereby inspire them so we would do well to keep it in mind that the essence of all doubts is injury 
to one's own self at the first instance and to others at the second. It is like a double-edged sword which not only harms the victims mentally but also kills the perpetrators both mentally and spiritually. Doubts are expressions of our own insufficiency in that respect. It is a paradigm of ours through which we express our inner built. We want the world to be as we see. This is not the reality about an objective truth. That's why the scriptures say that a doubting mind perishes. Samshya Atma Vinashyati Cross over all these doubts. As Sri Ramka says, have firm faith, completely believe that there is God and surrender to Him wholeheartedly and feel that God is always guiding you. Have positive thoughts, doubts which might be there in the heart because of some impurities accumulated in the past life. Those doubts get melted and slowly and they go away. So what is needed is proper understanding of the scriptures and assimilating the ideas, applying the ideas in your life and being devoted to Guru and his words and to be well established in the faith. That's the way how to get rid of the danger of doubt. Master Mahesha said, people like Dr. Sarkar speak of doing good to the world. So I told him what you had said about it. Sri Ramakrishna said smilingly, what did I say? Master Mahesha said, about Shambhu Malik, he had said to you, it is my desire to devote my money to the building of schools, hospitals, dispensaries and the like. That will do good to many. Thereupon, you had said to him, Suppose God appears before you, will you then ask him to build schools, hospitals and dispensaries? I told the doctor another thing. Sri Ramakrishna said, Those who are born to do work belong to a different class. What else did you say? Yam answered, I said to the doctor, If your aim is to visit the image of Mother Kari, what will you gain by spending all your time in giving alms to the poor by the roadside? First you had better somehow visit the image. Afterwards you may give alms to your heart's content. Master said, Did you talk about anything else? Yam man said, Yes. I told him that many of those who come to you have conquered lust. Thereupon the doctor replied, I too have conquered lust. I said, you are a great man. It is no wonder that you have conquered lust. But the amazing thing is that under his influence, even insignificant creatures have conquered it. Afterwards I told him what you had said to Girish. Master said smilingly, what did I say? A man said, you said to Girish, the doctor has not been able to surpass you. You said that with reference to his calling you, a divine incarnation. Master said, discuss the doctrine of divine incarnation with Dr. Sarkar. He who liberates others is the incarnation of God. The scriptures speak of 10 of 24 and also of innumerable incarnations. We shall stop here. See, meditation is a stage when concentration is 100%. You are meditating on the object Suppose you are meditating on Lord Krishna. So when the concentration is 100%, so your you uh, thinking of Lord Krishna is deepened, becomes intense. That intensity of uh, thinking of Lord Krishna without any diversion, that means the whole mind is fully thinking of Lord Krishna. That is meditation. That means you... you Totally, you forget yourself. For the, and the, for the time being, you are not aware of your, your own being. You feel only He exists, only Lord Krishna. You are just immersed in that thought. Because your whole mind is sitting, you feel ecstatic joy. It's a tremendous joy, really. Because the object of meditation you love so much, that's why you are meditating. And when you see when you have the vision of the deity, then that is the uh, final 
result of uh, meditation. So when you get into that ecstatic state, you desire nothing at that time. If the Lord asks you, ask for a boon, you will say, Oh Lord, I don't want anything. I am just fully satisfied with you. Because the mind doesn't want anything other than God. When the mind reaches that state, then only God appears. There are so many ways of God appearing. One is God appears to you to satisfy your desires. Suppose you do vrat or you do with the intent, you make a sankalpa. I want this thing to be done. Oh Lord, please help me. I will, I will offer worship to you. The wholeheartedness you worship and your wish will be granted. There is another kind of uh, God's grace. But this is special. This is you are seeking nothing. That's why you get into Nirukhap Samadhi. In that Nirukhap Samadhi, you reach that state after reaching which you don't want to come back. Just you don't want. You Coming back for what purpose? So you feel that way. And you feel you are part and parcel of God Himself. Just your mind dissolves there. That's why Sri Ramakrishna says, mind becomes Atman. When the mind is dissolving, then that's the final state. That's called liberation. All this play is going on because of the mind only. Because of the subtle body. So as long as the subtle body stays, you will be having experiences in your life. Wherever we are. All the Chant the name of the Lord and His glory unceasingly, that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire, worldly lust raging furiously within. Our name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart, opening its cup to knowledge of thyself, O self, down deep in the waves of His breast, tasting His nectar at every step, bathing in His name that bath my very selves. Various are thy names, O Lord, in each and every name thy power resides. No times are set, no rites are needful for chanting of thy name. So vast is thy mercy. How huge then is my wretchedness, who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name. O my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass. Be patient and forbearing like a tree. Take no honor to thyself. Give honor to all. Chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O Lord and soul of the universe, mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue. The playthings of lust or the ties of fame. As many times as I may be reborn, grant me, O Lord, a steadfast love for thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant, O sweet one. In thy mercy, consider him as just beneath thy feet. How oh, I long for the day, when an instant separation from thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years, when my heart burns away with his desire, and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet let me be, in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of thine arms, not be willing to withdraw of thy presence, though it tears my soul asunder. O thou who stirrest the hearts of thy devotees, do with me what thou wilt, but thou art my heart's beloved, thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all realize what is good, may all be actuated by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery, may the wicked become virtuous, may the virtuous attain tranquility, may the tranquil be freed from bonds, may the freed make others free. May good be dead all people, may the sovereign righteous rule the earth, may all beings ever attain what is good, may the worlds be prosperous and happy, may the clouds pour rain in time, may the earth be blessed with crops, may all countries be freed from calamity. May holy men live without fear. May the Lord the destroy of sins, the presiding thee of all sacred works be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased, he being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied.